Okay. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, know. come in here. <laughs> Mr. Well, Mr. Ramos. Wait, are we saying goodbye? I was to singing. Every, off we, should we all get in here and Do say goodbye? No, it's okay. Oh, I'm now. in it. We're using our... Yeah, me in. We're using our natural tripods. Thank you for touching my shoulder. Do you want to hold it so you can get everybody in there? Oh, hello. We're all in the studio. Hello. Hello. My name's Thomas Shelby. I'm from the Peaky Blinders. What, what, what is this? What is this, boys? And, and Danielle? This is the last podcast that we're shooting at the Gooshlam's offices. Yup. Mm. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, our, our, my lover. Our landlord kicked us out. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all, well, at it. least we're all together in this one. It's true, we are we're all together. We're all together. So. Ethan, you were in a total, as an official member of the Gooshlam's podcast... You were in one episode in the office. Yes! Well, he was no, I was in two of them, but you weren't here. I know, but like, in the this office. This is the first I mean, full... As, as us all together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 100%. Very... I feel honored to have been a part. But yeah. it's okay, because we're going to have some great Skype episodes coming yes. your way. Oh, yeah. yeah! University life. Yeah, right? We're all separated. All right. Thank you for watching. Thank, thank you. Please vote. Thank you. Vote. <laughs> and remember, vote. you get what you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and that's where it was like, that's where it was kind of scary to see that in the streets where it's like all these people. But I, th I feel like they were protesting more because of the cloud around us. So do people just like eat loaves of bread just like I walked out of the theater the first time like man I want to go see that again and then I did and I loved it even more the second time and I feel like that kind of scares me a little bit <laughs> Quickly before we end if you're happy and you know it clap your hands Everybody clap their hands <laughs> All right, let's get the clap. I already got it, but like you let's you all stay get quiet Okay, <laughs> ready? Yeah, it feels so powerful <laughs> <laughs> That's alarming. Oh my god. Something we need looser gun laws in Canada, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's how it starts, dude. I feel so powerful with this. And then the next time it's put all the money in the bag. <laughs> Andrew Shear. Don't point that at gun me. Laws. Okay. Let's do mm. it. Okay. Put that down. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Ralph, count down. Alright, everybody, count down. <laughs> okay. On three, we clap, okay? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. 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 Alright. All right, three, <laughs> two, one, clap. That was perfect. Yo, that was crisp. <laughs> that was what? actually really good. It's amazing crisp. what a gun does that from my, my, my So hands will you let us go now? We, we will start the podcast now. We'll start the podcast. Arthur, now. can you unlock the door, please? <laughs> Stop. Stop. All right, so... Welcome back to No One's Gonna Listen. I'm hosting, apparently. I just found out when I got here. So He's got the gun, so therefore he hosts. Yeah, exactly. The this is the talking stuff. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> talk. Ralph, can I have the talking You point it at someone and you want them to talk. It's like, oh! <laughs> I just want to thank you guys for having me on today. Um, does anyone else want the talking gun? <laughs> Ethan wants the talking gun. I like tomatoes. <laughs> thank you, Ethan. <laughs> this is where we introduce ourselves, yeah. correct? Um, yeah, um, I guess I'm Ralph, I'm hosting today, so here you go, you talk now. We're not doing this alone. Yeah, that's good. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Chris. Oh, okay. We are doing it. I'm Ryan. And I'm Dude Chevette. <laughs> <laughs> that's a throwback. Took, I had a bunch of different ideas. I'm I like, thought you were going to say Andrew Shear. I was going to say <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, but I'm like, nah, that's not funny. We also have uh, have a special special camera Who? <laughs> on, on a special person. Whoa. <laughs> right there. We got, Ray, Ray, we right got, there. We got Danielle in the moderator Danielle. seat. And the moderator cam for the first time. Stunning. <laughs> Where's the cam? Oh, the moderator oh, cam. Crazy. Oh, oh, the moderator. Oh, wow. Yeah, we got the moderator cam. Wait, so like, if things get heated, is are, is Danielle gonna like break us up? <laughs> Guys, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna run I up and she's gonna take the talking mind. gun from us. <laughs> order, order, <laughs> order in the court. She's gonna, <laughs> she fires three shots in the air though. Quite. The honorary <laughs> gentleman has the right to speak. That's common stuff. Wasn't, wasn't that like a thing in like the 1800s? If a woman was there, she'd be like an honorary man or something? Would she? They wouldn't give. 
I mean, I'm sure now it's I'm like honorary man. woman. I don't know. Remember that scene in Wonder Woman where she went into the chambers and a man, a woman had never been in the chambers. Yeah, they were before. like, and they were like, and then she walks up into everyone and she just goes, and Professor Lupin was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Professor Lupin turned out to be an angry god. <laughs> and he's Ares, the god of war. I would never think Lupin would be that guy. Professor Lupin also played a Nazi in the Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Oh my gosh, that's so true. Yo, Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Damn, that's heavy. I can't watch that movie again. R.I.P. 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 everybody. Rip. Rip to... R.I.P. the Boy in the Striped Rip. Pajamas. <laughs> that's terrible. You can't say that. He's not a real it's person. true. I don't want that. His name was better. Shamul, dude. Was he a real person? <laughs> dude, Shamul. <laughs> that's what his name was. Yeah. Shamul? That's Shalom. what his name was. I've read the book before. That's what his name was. Shalom. Shalom. No, not Shalom. That's Sh- Shalom is hello in Hebrew. Is it? Yeah. Shalom. I thought it was like cool. peace or something. Never mind. Maybe that is what it means. I don't know. I know it's like a good greeting. Look it up. <laughs> Moderator. <Google. laughs> you have uh, a response? What, what is the question? We have a, a fact check. Linguist. Our resident no, linguist. Oh, 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 oh. Ralph, you gained the right to hold the talking I'm, gun. Yes. The next I'm pretty sure it means peace. Let this me just said Ralph Ramos check. has moved to Israel. <laughs> no, 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 I have it. No, I have it. No, I have it. No, I have it. I okay. Have it. I mean, technically, we're both right because it means peace, but it's also used as salutation by Jews uh, at meeting or. Oh, so it's like when you go, like, yo, peace. It's like Jack so Nicholson? Oh, scan. Never mind. Jack Scannon played Shemol. In the night, you thought Jack Nicholson played. No, I saw Jack. Right I right. saw Jack. That'd be a like Nicholson. So, oh my god, look! The guy Professor Lupin played, his name was Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Ramos. In the, I'm, I'm in the you're boy in the Nazi. Nazi. Yeah. He plays a, you're you play the Nazi, Nazi in the boy in the striped oh pajamas. My god. Oh, bro, he was in Dragonheart. Oh, cool. yeah, he was the. Who was he? No, <laughs> the dragon was Sean Connery in Dragonheart. Who was. Oh, he was the. Did we get a knock? He was the evil knight. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Me? We're okay. recording. Because oh. <laughs> you're laughing. Yeah, we're recording. Do you want me to. Sorry. Do you want me to call? Yeah, <laughs> okay. No, I guess. You, can, you guys take the talking sticks for now, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Ralph Ramos will be problem. right back after a message from oh, our sponsors. <laughs> Well, as Ralph was going and you mentioned our sponsors, it would be a great time to talk about Squarespace. If you want a good website, a it's professional always, website, yeah. choose Squarespace. So Squarespace been, or Audible. I've been seeing so many advertising for Squarespace. I, I've personally been listening to a thousand and one jokes to tell at the park. I've been, per- I've been personally listening to a thousand words. Uh, I've personally ah. been listening to The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. So. That's such a depressing book, dude. And, like, they keep it hidden that, that, that he's, like, a Nazi the entire book. Who? In the boy in the striped pajamas, the they are yeah, they are like, it's like implied that it's a Nazi, and not until you see the camp do you know that he's a Nazi. Mm. It's kind of like clever, like it's like hinted at, but like in the movie, he's always wearing his military uniform. I don't see how they could in do the, that in the book. Well, or in the, the book, in it's different. The book, they're just like he wears a military uniform. They don't specify that he's a Nazi. That's true. I mean, yeah, soldiers. Until there's a specific part where he like he's talking to like Shamol, and he says like. He's like, well, I have to wear this on my clothes. And he draws like the Star of David, mm. and then he goes, well, my dad has to wear this, and then he draws a swastika. It's like, oh no! And that's like the that moment that they Nazi. reveal that his dad's a Nazi. Ah, interesting. It's kind of like guess a twist. you did not see that coming. It's like the Spider-Man uh, Far From Home plot twist. Am I right? Pound it. Got didn't him. didn't see that coming. Am I right? <laughs> am I? Oh no! Charger's on the phone. Huh? Oh, it it's okay. It's okay. It's my phone. Set, my phone. My, my laptop's at eighty-two percent. Oh, we're good. We got battery life for days. We got Sorry. battery life for days. <laughs> Old news, but Spider-Man's back in the MCU. Yeah, oh, we, yeah. Have we talked about that? No, no, we didn't. That was one of my topics last episode, but uh, but I spent a lot of time on that on that orphan girl. But dude, okay, well, that just don't have time dedicated to it. That uh, the the girl who who was that was basically the plot of Orphan. You know what was on TV today? Oh my today? gosh! You know I don't was even want to think about that again. It was on TV today. Oh, really? The story? Yeah. No, no, the Orphan, not the story. Oh, oh it's the... a sign they're taking over. We should get her on the podcast and interview her. I oh, yeah, yeah. I will not come. Well, <laughs> I will be far away. I will lock myself in my house. We'll no, find we're... out if she's um actually twenty two. Or I'm pretty she, sure she's 22. Or if she's actually... 
um, eight. It's like, oh yeah, have you seen the movie Orphan? Oh yeah, that's actually um, my favorite. That's movie. my favorite movie of all time, and I really want to do the same thing that happened. Cool. Hey, uh, police. Yeah, can you just come over and pick this uh, this woman up real quick? Not, no, she's not a kid. She's, she is a full adult woman. I'm still. You having, can check her. I'm no. <laughs> we don't even have to. We know. That's like that was that's still the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. That one photo of her. Like I would. It, it's a pretty freaky photo. If you I, if you Ralph's show back, like, you should. Okay, if we ever tell that story to someone, we need to show them the photo first and be like, just keep this in mind, and then we go into it, and then later they're like. Oh my gosh, that wasn't a child I was looking at. That was a full-grown woman who is psychotic and wants to kill me. Yep. That's just scary. That's scary, man. That's pretty terrifying. What are you guys talking about? We were talking about how last episode we were talking about that woman. That oh, orphan. The, 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 the girl. Oh. Yeah. Wait. Um, it was like... Oh, like, like she like... Yeah, yeah. She, she claimed to be like She 16. went to America. Yeah. But she's like really biologically like 14? She's like 20 something. Oh no. Well, now she's like 20. I think at the, maybe at the time she was 14, now she's older. No, this she was claiming like to be like. Ago? She was claiming to be six, and then she was like actually. <laughs> I think she was like 19. Because when she was eight, they found out she was like biologically 22. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she had us in the first half, not gonna lie. <laughs> scary, man. Well, I mean, only some. That's that's what some reports say, but then some, some say that she was actually. She's actually six, seven, or eight. Yeah, because was it? Did you say there was like a, a bone density report right after, and they were like, "No, she's actually eight. Yeah. And so it's like, well, I don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. From what I heard, I would strongly believe she's twenty. From the, just the things she said, like oh. she was talking like she was. Yeah, she was talking kids. a lot of she a lot of talking adult shit. She had yeah. full pubic hair oh at six gosh, years old. The father so might be okay. So apparently, the parents might be going to prison. For what? Child in abandonment. Oh. Child she, abandonment. That's just ridiculous. But didn't they prove that she was? Okay, she also. Oh, that's so okay, scary. Now that now that I look at oh. the photos of her, she just kind of look older. No, no. Okay, maybe no, no, no. Look at that. Tell me that looks like a twenty one year old woman. She looks a little older. Dude. No, she yeah. looks like a child. Ah, she's a little older. That is so scary. I can't even put into words. And then there's literally just the yeah, because it's poster. literally the plot. I mean, I feel like as soon as she starts talking, like, I'm going to kill the entire family, I feel like that's like a... Yeah, why yeah, is like, that just not, I'm going to dump you off to somewhere yeah, else? Yeah, right. Did you keep the receipt? Like, yeah. Yeah, like we can work Walmart, through it. Like, like, yeah, I want to return this. Yeah. Have the receipt and everything. <laughs> What's the plot of Orphan? I haven't watched it. It's about an elderly woman who has, like... Dwarfism. Who has dwarfism, who has, like, a form of dwarfism where she looks super young, and she gets adopted by a family, and then she... Basically, her whole plan is to uh, seduce the father of the family. Ew. And then kill the, like, kill then kill the family. <laughs> Wait, why, though? Because she's crazy. Yeah, because she That's likes... It? Yeah. Because she likes the the death? Because she likes... No, she just wants... Because she can't... She just wants to kill people? Yeah, I guess Fun so. fact, Leonardo DiCaprio produced the orphan, or helped produce it. That's... Uh... <laughs> that explains the scene where the orphan is like... I'm gonna kill you. Then she looks directly into the camera and says, "Climate change is actually <laughs> a global danger." I'm pretty sure this may be fa- false that ex- news. Fact that explains. Me, that I'm... explains when she looks into, the, when the father looks into the camera and says, "I only like dating younger 20, 20 year olds." And then the mother like, looks what? into the camera and says, "Leonardo DiCaprio should have won an Oscar for." <laughs> oh, you don't know that? How Leonardo DiCaprio very, like he prefers. It, it's very he like dates younger women. He dates yeah. like. Like early twenties woman. I remember seeing like he's a like, graph. <laughs> like okay. every, yeah. he gets, he, no, but he gets older and the younger his woman, <laughs> the woman he dates. Okay. And it's kind of really as long weird. as he, he makes sure it's at eighteen. If it doesn't go lower than that, I'm cool with it. Man. I'm so cool with it as long as it just does not dip below that point. That's the that's that's the bare minimum, man. Like 18, he's 19. like he's like almost like fifty, and this man. He's, so, he's getting so old. It's I so know. Sad. <laughs> He's gone Oscar time at least. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not for. Uh, I mean, could have won it earlier for a different movie, but for what movie? Oh well, I I okay. I never I've never seen this, but from the things I've seen, I think he should have won for Gilbert's Grape. Oh, the fact that Tommy Lee Jones beat him. I mean, because I watched The Fugitive and I was like, he was good, but compared to what DiCaprio did at that age, I don't know. I thought DiCaprio was. Fugitive is a pre. Oh, actually, can't. I got someone to bring up about the Fugitive after. You continue. No, that that's that's okay. it. Um, Harrison Ford stars in the Fugitive. I know, yeah. 
Um, do you know who is a big climate change activist all of a sudden? Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Like, going to the fucking UN, bro. And is like... What? He was at the UN the other day, and he was just like... The temperatures are rising. <laughs> Chewy, we need to get out of here. <laughs> so the no. temperatures are rising. Where's, else. He's, like, he's like, where's Greta? We have to protect her. <laughs> we have like to protect her at all costs. Dude, like, it's just like... It's actually weird, dude. Like, he, he did some speech where he was like... Stop electing idiots who don't believe in science. And I'm like, Harrison Ford. I can't. I thought. I thought Harrison Ford would be like a hardcore Republican. Yeah, no, he strikes you as like a. But apparently, he's like super liberal. Oh, <laughs> and apparently, I saw an interview with his wife once where she was talking about him texting with emojis and how weird it makes her feel. <laughs> that Harrison Ford is like, love you, heart. He's going uh, through a midlife crisis for he's, sure. He's like, I want to be 20 again. You mean end life crisis? Isn't he super old? Like, he's yeah, he's in his 60s. 77. He's oh, so old. Yeah. He's 77 and he's filming a new Indiana Jones in four months. Uh, they're, they're making another six Indiana months. Jones. Because Kingdom of the Crystal Skull went really well. It's not that bad. Anyway. <laughs> no, but like... Shia LaBeouf. You're Shia LaBeouf. Running thing. from your life from Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> there's blood on his hands. He's brandishing his He's a murderer. And you can't oh my even God, there's blood stomach. everywhere. <laughs> what? <laughs> you, you, there's the part where you, you get your, your leg caught in the bear trap. Your leg. Oh, yeah. Ah, it's, it's caught, caught in a bear, bear trap. trap. Gnawing off your no e- gnawing, gnawing off your leg. Quiet, quiet. And it cuts to that kid. Yeah. He's being like, quiet, quiet. <laughs> uh, that kid should be in Smash. <laughs> His final Smash is he shows up in the Shia LaBeouf mask, and then oh, he like the big paper mesh. <laughs> yeah. And then he just goes quiet, quiet. And then Mario goes bring, and he flies off, and you're game. And that's how yeah. You know, speaking of Harrison Ford, I actually watched Blade Runner twenty forty nine recently. Oh, good that was honestly. One of the best, if not one of my favorite visual movies I've ever seen. Like, the visuals in those, that movie was such phenomenal. A, such a good movie. Although, you can tell Harrison Ford is old when you watch the fight scenes between him and Ryan Gosling. He very famously actually punched Ryan Gosling in that scene in the casino. Yeah, I know. He, like, if, and you can totally tell. You can see. Like, his reaction is completely different. Because there's a scene where, like, they're having, like, a quick scuffle. And, he, and like, in the script, he was supposed to just, like, like knock him off. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. apparently, Harrison Ford, like... Full on swung at wow. him and like square hit him. Wow. And someone on like. I'm just getting punched by a 77 year old feeling. Okay, but you gotta, you gotta remember. Just 77, wait, 77 year old or 77 year old Harrison Ford? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like apparently he, like, there's actually like a photo where they freeze framed him like recoiling and it's just like like Ryan Gosling being like Bleh. yeah like his eyes are here and then his eyelids are all the way back yeah, here like it's actually kind of messed up like he got like full gout yeah, yeah he got punched hard. it was like when Ralph accidentally punched you Jerry. well it was like I was you can tell that he's old but you can also tell that's that that's fading from my memory yeah, yeah. Cap, cap, oh when you punched me in the face that's fading from my memory it, during Pandora it's not something we can forget that easily Ralph yeah you literally punched you me in the face. <laughs> actually, 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 I'm really. When really it was during the the alleyway scene where uh, Chris is getting mugged, they grab him by the arms and then you punch him. Pandora spoilers. Behind, behind. behind oh yeah. Behind, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. You haven't okay. watched it. Yet. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. With a. Uh, I, I can't say his name. <laughs> oh. Can we not name drop anyone in the? I mean, you can check the credits. Yeah, you yeah. can so check the credits. Watch the film and then check the credits. Yeah, We're yeah, not yeah. name dropping if, anyone. We don't have expressed consent to name drop. Yeah, no. but they have they have consent to be in the film, so you can watch the film. Yes, go watch the film. Yeah, and then you'll know what we're talking. Um, about. watch it. <laughs> watch Pandora. Um, three years later. Three. Oh there my it gosh, it's been so long. It's been, it's been four years, isn't it? No, no it's 2016. 2016. It's 2016. We started making it 2015. No, we it? started making it early 2016. Really? It came out well, late 2016. 2015 we started. Nobody. So, oh my god. <laughs> I love Harrison Ford's face. <laughs> he looks like... He's holding his hand. Because <laughs> Harrison Ford is like, oh shit, I just punched Ryan Gosling in the face. And then Ryan Gosling just kind of looks like he's like, did he just punch me? <laughs> Yo, it's like how in Captain Marvel, Samuel L. Jackson looks so old. Even though all the de-aging, all his movements just look like an old man's. Yeah, because he's, he's like, running around. He's like, also, after all the de-aging, he still looks nothing like Sam Jackson looked like in 1993. No, he's not like Pulp Fiction, Samuel Jackson. But yeah, that was like around the time of um, Die Hard 3, too. So he like oh, he yeah. looked like way younger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back then. My favorite my favorite thing is just the running scene where he just looks like an old man. Oh yeah, he's like limping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How old is Samuel Jackson? 
65? Oh man, everyone's getting so old. Robert De Niro's old. Is it Robert De Niro? Like, Robert De Niro's almost 80, I'm pretty sure, isn't he? Well, you know he's who's getting old. really old? I just saw the other one. Queen Elizabeth II, I yeah, know. Yeah, that's right? true. That's true. He's um, like 95. No, someone... Okay, well, Betty White's like 97. Be- Betty White's a queen, man. She should be queen of England, man. She's gonna. Out- she's literally gonna outlive have you ever seen Betty? Have you ever seen Betty White's modeling photos from the 50s? Yes. That's, no. a, that's a whack thing. Dude. I don't know why. I shouldn't have said yes so quickly. <laughs> You're like, so, yes, yes, I have. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, wow. what? Oh, I see it at night. <laughs> Every night. <laughs> she's literally older than sliced bread. <laughs> I read that. I also read that. Sliced bread didn't appear until like... The, the, the late 20s, early 30s. And she was Seriously. born before that. She was born before that. She's literally older than sliced bread. Holy hell. So do people like, just, like, eat loaves of bread? Just, like... <laughs> no, I mean, before, like, you, like before sold. bread was, like, sold cut. sliced. Yeah. They like, had to cut it. Themselves. They sold loaves yeah. and you had to cut it. Because, like, the baker wow. would just, like, wrap it in wax wow. paper. Ralph, you're going to look back at this later and be like, wow, I'm done. <laughs> I'm... Ralph's sitting at home at night with his talking gun and he's just, like... Stand. I've been holding the talking gun this whole time. We've just robbed you of your person. You guys are just talking. It's fine. I'm sorry. I, I want you guys. Okay. To we should all. Okay. All right. We should all hold the talking gun during this podcast. Like we're all like have like a finger on us, so we're allowed to talk. No. You're Listen, not. Murray. <laughs> Stop. I'm not doing this. Okay. Wait. Are we gonna talk about that, or are we gonna talk? Are we gonna bring that up? It's up to you, Murray. What? Yes. Well, it's do a you, Joker we reference. Really talk oh, I was about it. to ask if you guys want to do like a spoiler-free or spoiler review. Should we do well, we could do free? we could do the end game thing where like the first couple minutes is like spoiler-free and then we say three, but Ralph two, hasn't seen one. It. I don't give a shit. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I don't care. So spoiler-free <laughs> first, then we go into the spoiler review. Yeah. Sure. Who yeah. wants to go first? Well, okay, wait, uh, Ralph. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, like yeah, wait, what are your thoughts on it? Just without without seeing it. Yeah. But it's like before we talk about it. I like when he does the. Like, have you seen the memes? Like, oh yeah, <laughs> the stare dancing. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Wait, like, what are your thoughts on the media reaction to it? Stop laughing. I'm, I'm really so confused because I haven't been keeping up. Like, I've seen some people be like, "Oh yeah, this is like incel propaganda," and then like I see other people like, "This is like really good and shed light on like." mental health and stuff so like i don't know what like the consensus is i didn't even know what incel meant until i saw really? this movie yeah I didn't know do you what know what was. do you know what incel means isn't, isn't it like a guy who doesn't get the girl involuntary celibate yeah involved like it he, basically yeah. means you want to get laid but you don't but, but you, you can't you can't no matter and 99 percent of the time it's because you're a legitimate creep oh and you're like you have some weird like a lot of you, you, you feel this, like you deserve like your everything. old yeah. sex. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know an example of yeah, yeah. Okay. But then yeah, like, I know oh, like no, no, three no, no, no. guys. No, sorry, that was yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm myself. Like, <laughs> no, no. The incel started getting really big because um, the Toronto van attack was last year, and that guy oh, really? identified as an incel, and he wrote on a message board beforehand saying, "I'm gonna punish the people that wouldn't sleep with me and stuff." Well, see, I was when I just said I was thinking of someone. I was thinking of the dude in 2013 who did the same thing with his car and he shot a bunch of people because he was like, oh, women's Elliot Rogers. It was the same thing. Wasn't yeah, it? he was also kind of an incel, right? He was. That was where the movement kind of started. Right. And there have been like people online that have like, and even like scientists and like psychiatrists because he left like vlogs Mm -hmm. leaving like leading up to the shooting yeah yeah. and basically they have like broken it down and that's where the incel movement really like kicked off at least it always existed yeah it was but then it got like overdrive after that happened because people started like identifying with him and the same thing happened with like the colorado shooting after like dark knight rises and stuff where this is where the big controversy with joker came from okay because we talked last week that that guy, the media widely reported that he called himself the Joker and stuff. And then he went, he, there was a shooting at a Batman mm-hmm. premiere. So, except that's now in a lot of contention because a lot of like figures in like, like the police and other people that have read like his memoirs and stuff have said that he never really identified as the Joker. He compared himself in passing and then the media picked up on that one fact yeah, yeah, or something yeah. and embellished it to a, a wide point. Basically, what the fear was was that this movie, because it it's about like a guy who is just down on his luck and becomes you know the Joker, it literally becomes like a supervillain, like a psychopath. Yeah, he's not even a supervillain. Like he's like it's a really realistic depiction of like yeah, yeah. 
The, yeah. the thing is, it, it wasn't like other interpretations. Like, you look at Jack Nicholson, right? Like, yeah. he was like a mobster, right? When, like, he killed people. He fell people. into a vat of chemicals. And yeah, right? He killed people, but it was always done in a very, like, fantastical, comic booky way. Like, he, he shakes hands with someone, and he zaps them, and then there's suddenly a charred skeleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, it's that. But this, it, this in Dark Knight started, like, this weird trend. Dark Knight to a lesser extent, this to a much larger extent. Because it, this one focuses on it. This one it's focuses on it. It's just Yeah. Because, the... like, Teeth Ledger Joker was just kind of a fucked up dude. Yeah. We don't know why he was you fucked up. We don't know why. We don't know what happened Like, it's, it's implied in a few places. Mm-hmm. Like a soldier or something. Yeah, like, his... Well, he, we know his father abused him, and then there's, like... There's, like... Well, no, you don't you don't know that, because he was, like... That's true, a different too. story. That's true. Time. And even, like, Joker in the books... The, the famous line is, I don't know my own past, but I prefer it to be multiple choice. Mm-hmm. And then that's like killing joke. Yeah. But like, the thing with this movie was that it kicked off this weird thing where people in the media got really, I think almost rightfully worried that people would look at this and see it as like a call to action. Mm-hmm. Like, because it was a movie about him, a lot of, I guess, like, before the movie came out, a lot of, like, outlets and a lot of experts were looking at it thinking it was going to almost, like... People are going to, like, identify with him and then, like, go, like, oh, I should, I should, I should be like him. Or not yeah. just that, but also, like, romanticize him in some yeah. weird way. Mm-hmm. If you watch the movie, not really a spoiler, doesn't really do that. He's no. a fucked up dude. And it's clear he's a fucked up dude. Um, a lot of it is... But, like, leading up to it, that was a big, like, talking point. Um, so it was always kind of like a weird thing going to see Joker, right? Because mm-hmm. you didn't know what it was going to like, it was going to be like and what was going to happen after it came out. Not a lot really happened after it came out. There are some weird people that have like Joker profile pictures and stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's kind of weird. <laughs> it kind of rubs Jesus me the wrong Christ. way. Well, I mean, people like... Well, I definitely think, like, like, I don't think the movie is, is, is for incels, but I definitely think incels will love this fucking movie. Well, because yeah. I mean, he, Arthur is... An incel, essentially. <laughs> like, that's why. Yeah. You know, like that's what we should do. It's yeah. Like, he can't get the girl. So Didn't like, be the spoilers. spoilers. No, it's Didn't not. A sp- no, no, no. You'll watch the film. You'll get. Huh? No, 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 no. Don't. What? what, what? What? Not right now. <laughs> no, yeah. Okay. Well, well, save it. Give, for it, save it. give it a spoiler. Okay, okay. Give it like a, just a really quick spoiler rundown. Thirty seconds. Non spoiler rundown. Non spoiler. Sorry. Non spoiler. <laughs> What you thought of the movie, like just really quick. Superman died. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sorry. So thirty. Superman's seconds. mustache. Thirty. Wow. More and more pictures of him in the mustache. That's so funny. Out. They should have just kept him with the mustache. Yeah, but honestly, that would have been kind of badass. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but I accept that. <laughs> no, they should have just had him do a whole ass beard and do that whole thing. Oh yeah, like like mullet Superman and everything. Yeah. Just gone full. Yeah, go yeah. full force with it. Anyway, um, yeah. What were you saying? 30 second rundown of what you thought of the movie, spoiler free. Um, I walked out of it feeling really gross. <laughs> I kind of wanted to take a cold shower. Mm-hmm. It left me feeling disgusted. It is a well made movie, not a movie I want to see again anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Opposite opinion. I watched. I walked out of the theater the first time like, man, I want to go see that again. And then I did, and I loved it even more the second time. <laughs> And I feel like that kind of scares me a little bit as <laughs> to why I enjoyed it so much. That's why I'm, I'm interested to talk to you guys about, like, how you felt about it. Look at her face. Okay, all right. I haven't watched the movie. Cut to the camera. Yeah. Cut to the camera. <laughs> no, I haven't watched the movie, but, like, your description was very weird. You wanted to go home and take a cold shower? Like, that's so specific. Well, we'll get into it. We'll, we'll do it. We'll get into it. Why for, people take cold showers? Oh. Uh, yeah, no, it's definitely not for that reason. Not that reason, as in... I don't. I wanted to, like... <laughs> no. Ryan let the theater... Turned on. <laughs> I wanted to bathe oh, after I watched this movie because I felt disgusting. What about you? Or <laughs> Ralph, what was your thought yeah. of the film? You know, okay, I honestly, like, I, I'm really excited to see it because everybody that I hear like has like a really polarizing opinion on it. Either it's like rave reviews or just like like fuck that shit. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I really want to see that and form my own opinion on it. Christopher, Mr. Christopher. Um. <laughs> I'm kind of on the same page as Ryan. I walked out and I was like, I don't really feel that great. Cool. <laughs> I don't, but I did acknowledge. I'm like, okay, that was a pretty, like, that was a pretty good movie. I just like, I just kind of like was like, Ugh. okay. It's a well made movie. Oh, it's yeah. well shot. Mm-hmm. It's well very directed. well shot. Well, I was like, acted. it's beautifully acted. Yeah. Joaquin. I 
I never, I don't want to see it again. I, yeah, no, I was like, okay, I'm like, I need a while. I like, I do want to yeah. see it again, but not like, I need not, like detox. Dude. Yeah, I need, to, I need to wait like a while to see it again. You mean like that, uh, what was that movie with the horse people? <laughs> yeah. Sorry to bother you. you. No, we talked one of the greatest political thing. films of we all honestly, time. Sorry thing. to bother you. The so more great. I think about Sorry to Bother You, the more I like Sorry it's to Bother You. Actually. It's such a good movie. But like, I, I think uh, the reason we were so like freaked out by it was that we left and we didn't we, we didn't expect horse. It felt like a drug trip. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah, the, the more, more I think about, about it, it, the more I feel like it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, the more I think. I just like slept. <laughs> the more I think about it, so it's fever dream. Okay, yeah, I want to tell a really quick story about Sorry to Bother You. We had a script writing assignment in school recently where we had to read a story, like a script. Sorry yeah. to bother you. And then present it to the class, talk about the script structure and the story, and then they would show a trailer of that movie and say, Did you imagine it like this? I picked Sorry to Bother You, but. Someone had already picked it, oh, so I did, I did Black Klansman instead, which I I was very proud of the report I wrote. <laughs> One of my friends picked Sorry to Bother You, and I don't think he had seen Sorry to Bother You, so he read it, and then he's like, horse people, and then there's like there's like they have dicks and shit, <laughs> and then it starts out as like this like as like almost like this race relations thing, and then it turns into this completely different thing, and everyone's like, what are you talking about? And then they showed the trailer, and everyone was even more confused, because that trailer has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. That trailer is like the first 20 minutes of that movie. Right. And the movie's like an hour and a half. Yeah. No, that that movie was so freaking good. Man. I gotta watch it again, man. You know what? We were talking. We need to do another one of our our, our commentary videos. <laughs> that should be the next commentary. Can I video. please attend when you guys yes. do that? I really want to be a part of that. Help, Help us! Man. We're hurting. We're hurting. <laughs> I'm getting fucking flashbacks. I was <laughs> so horrified. I, I remember the guys out. in front of us when we first saw it were like totally destroyed, and we were like, "Why are those guys so like so high, dude?" And then like at the end of the movie, we're like, "I understand now." Yeah, horse people, dude. It was so like. Like, we even talking, without the horse people, like, that movie's so... But, like, the horse people elevated it to yeah. this other... We were talking movie. about it a few weeks ago, me and you, and we were driving... You were driving me back to school, and we had, like, a really deep discussion about it. And, like, the really interesting thing is that there are so many interpretations mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, like, it like capitalism, race relations, like, the, the divide between the rich and the poor... And like I got the shit kicked out of me. Oh yeah. Well, no, he <laughs> looks like a shaggy dog. I forgot about that. <laughs> Covered in the shit. Yeah. And like you, you were saying how that alone, that one scene is just like filled with like con like contextual. Yeah, it is because oh, yeah. like it's like how the media is like desensitized or even encourages violence, and it's like. But then they act like they don't. That's the thing. Yeah, and it's like it's played in like a very comedic way, but like like if you think about it, it's like. It's a really great movie. I, I highly recommend it. So, Joker. Yeah, let's so go back. Wait. Spoilers now. Spoilers. We're going to count down. We're going to count down to the spoilers in five, four, three, two, one. Iron Man fucking dies. I was going to say. Thanos gets his head fucking cut off. <laughs> Batman has a three way with Robin and <laughs> Superman. Oh, I remember that, you know. <laughs> okay, no, I was asking earlier, like, doesn't. Doesn't uh, Joker's wife like die or something? Well, Joker does. So in the com in the comics, the original origin for the Joker was yes, his wife died, and that's what pushed him over to the like over the edge. Yeah, is that his wife had a miscarriage and she died? Oh, oh damn. So he so or she was hit by a car or something, and she and his like unborn yeah. child died, yeah. and then he like Probably the, hunts the, guy the classic down. like he agrees to like join with some criminals and yeah. then he falls into the, the waste and shit and then he comes out as a joker he becomes a waste you no. <laughs> yeah, he comes out and he's just shoes. like he just comes out with airpods and, <laughs> and fucking backwards cap <laughs> he comes out like he comes, comes out like me <laughs> he, he comes out with his talking gun just like with hey. that jacket with like the fur uh, the fur hood oh my god he has an listening iPhone, to Drake he has a smashed <laughs> iPhone 6 <laughs> Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Dude, we're literally just describing Ralph. Wow. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm out of here, guys. No, 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 no. the magazine. We're safe. We're safe. <laughs> we're safe. We're safe. We can talk. We can talk all we want. Okay. okay. So um, yeah, I'm very interested to talk um, about in the film. So in throughout the movie, it seems like he and Zazzy Beats, Zazzy, Zazzy Beats, Zazzy Beats, they have like a relationship, and yeah. that's what it seems like. Um, in a very poignant scene, which I think is the best scene in the entire movie, he's okay. after a really rough night. He's sitting in her apartment, 
it's one of the best scenes followed by the worst. Yeah. It's, it's, for, in my opinion. Worst in, in like quality or like how it made you feel? No, no, worst worst as in me thinking that it's like it wasn't a good scene to oh, do. Oh, okay. He murder her? Well, no, so no. he's sitting there. Well, well keep in mind, oh. the entire time it's it's like he's like they're together, they're yeah. going on dates, they're kissing so, and hugging and shit. So it literally, so how this relationship starts up is she like, her daughter is being annoying in the elevator and she looks over him and she's like, Phew. Yeah, pretends to kill her. And then he, like, yeah, automatically yeah. connects. He, like, automatically connects with her. She's like, oh, like, she feels how I feel. She's literally just some girl that lives, like, like a couple, couple doors down. A couple doors down. <laughs> and then, when he, kill, when, he, when he kills his first when he kills his first victims, he immediately goes to her door and starts making out with her. Like, he breaks the door down. She's like, what? And they start making out. Also, also, before that happened, he followed her to her work. That's true. And originally, he was going to go in, but then he's like, you know what? No, I'm not going to go in. Then she shows up at his door the next day like, hey, were you following me the other day? And he was like, oh, uh, yeah, I was. And she was <laughs> like, man, I was hoping you'd come in and rob the place, just jokingly. Yeah. So she's okay with the fact that he was following her, and you're like... That seems a bit off, but I'll go with it, and that just kind of starts and, their relationship. Yeah, a and you—it's it, kind of portrayed like it, like they have some weird, quirky, strange connection, <clears throat> and like, and then like his mother gets sick, and like mm-hmm. she's like, and they're like, she's like supporting him and hugging him and shit. So and she, then, yeah. Oh, and then when she kills the first first guys, and that that shows up on he, the he news. Kills the first yeah, guy. He, when yeah, yeah he when, kills his first victims, when, and they don't know who it is. Yeah. And like it shows up on the news, like all oh, these like Wall Street, these Wall Street Business dudes, men, yeah. businessmen, uh, were were killed, <laughs> and she she like that's looks what she at does. Him. She, she's she's literally right. like yeah fuck them yeah they fuck deserve to die. She's like that guy's a hero for shooting them, and he's just like <laughs> no. She, wait, she does that? No, no, no. no, no, no. He no, kind of like, smiles, smiles like, really yes. big because oh, okay. he's like yeah I killed those guys. Like, he yeah. didn't say he doesn't say that, but like he, but then. Who wants to tell? Who wants to describe it? What the the scene that I was? Yes. So after a really rough night for him, he's sitting in her like her like apartment. Like, he opens the door and he sits down, and he just starts like he he almost doesn't really start crying. He's just kind of like staring out into space, and you hear in her, her in, apartment. in her apartment. Keep in mind they're like basically dating at this yeah. point in the movie, and then you hear her saying good night to her daughter, and walk out, and she goes <gasps> when she sees him, and she goes, "Oh, you're Arthur, right?" You live down the hall. I've seen you around a couple times. And then it flashes back to every other time they've been together and he's fucking standing alone. He's a schizophrenic. He's just oh. fucking seeing shit. Okay, now you guys are tripping me out. <laughs> no. So wait, the scene that preceded that is when he finds out he's actually insane. Because he was abused as a child and he has like a mental condition. Yeah. Which involves like delusions and like hallucinations and shit. I think he always knew that because when he was in the therapy session with the woman, he said like, there was a large portion of my life. I don't know why I just went Irish there. There was a, lar- There's a large a lot. portion of my life. Oh, Yo, you're thinking of the I Irishman was- in Robert De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he is. I'm getting them mixed up. No, he's like, he says to his therapist, he's like, there was a, like a long time where I thought I didn't even exist. So, like, I think he knows he was delusional, but he just didn't know the extent the of it. The movie does have a lot of stuff that's open for interpretation. Yeah. The thing is, we were saying, one, that scene is super fucked because he's just sitting there. And at this point, he's so unhinged. And the reason it's so scary is because now he's trespassing in her, in her apartment. He's completely off of it. Mm. And you're like, her, like, six-year-old daughter is in the next room. What's he going to do to her? And it's just like such a freaky, creepy scene where he's just, she's just kind of like, he's just sitting there and she's like freaking out and is basically begging him to leave. Yeah. yeah. And they leave it when ambiguous. And he's built up this whole relationship with in her his in, his head. Head. Yeah. in his head. But they leave it ambiguous because then after she's like, you have to please leave, he like turns to her and he does the thing that she did where he like pretends to like blow his <sighs> brains out. And then the next shot is just him walking out of the apartment. So you're thinking... Did he, did just he fucking, do yeah. something to them, did he or did kill he leave them? the apartment? Did he just leave? I really hope he just left. But I when I first watched it, I didn't even think that maybe he did something else. I just assumed he left. Like he was, he just gave. I up. didn't like, know, man. I, I I hope he left. Did they leave it open ended like that? Yeah, yeah. Because it, well, then in the in, when he's chilling in his apartment right afterwards, you see an, an ambulance like the uh, sirens in his window. So it's like, are they just passing by, or are yeah. they coming because they need to? Or it could have been the cops because yeah, yeah. throughout the movie, the cops are like. Keep questioning him, so That's you don't know I mean. if it's the cops showing yeah. up. 
it's the whole movie. One of the major things in the movie that they all that, that kind of connects to the Joker stuff in the comics is you don't know what's real and what isn't. Yeah, yeah. For all we know, I hate that. the Joker's just a dude that like was like, I'm gonna dress up as a clown and kill people. Yeah. Like that's yeah. it. But then there's just all this like this whole like backstory, and this, the the movie really plays with that. The okay, that's the other thing. We know instantly that he has delusions. Yeah. Or hallucinations, because in the first twenty minutes he goes on the Murray Franklin show. But that wasn't really much of a delusion, as much of a, a fantasy. I really hope this could happen to me, you know. Which I, mean, I thought that it was a real. flashback at first. Real? Oh, okay, interesting, interesting. I thought it was just. I think it was. It was like a fantasy. I, I, I think that's what instantly sets up that he has these fantasies. Yeah, and then they become too. No, real. I realized it was a fantasy after. Yeah, but yeah. Like, yeah. But like I thought, I thought it was a flashback. Yeah. I thought that it actually legitimately yeah. happened. They too. shot it almost like a flashback, or yeah. almost. The opening, it almost presents it like it's right afterwards or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It's interestingly shot like that. Maybe that's what they were going for. Yeah, it probably was. Or maybe maybe he was, maybe was Todd Phillips was having a head rush because it took too much of a jewel hit. Yeah. <laughs> every, jewel we were talking about before you came here, every single like behind-the-scenes photo I've seen of him is Todd Phillips, the director, holding mm-hmm. a fucking jewel. Oh, shit. Um, what a what a cool bro. We can talk about Todd Phillips like. Wait, isn't Zazie beat in like um Deadpool. suicide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in Deadpool. Oh, yeah. she. Oh, that, she's that, Domino. That's her. Yeah, yeah I so is forgot. That, are those universes? No, that's Marvel. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, he always has a jewel. Um, he always has a jewel, dude. Literally, so the, he always has a jewel. So the reason why. I think that scene is one of the best scenes in the film, but followed also, by followed by the worst. I'm very interested to hear it because I'm like I genuinely think that the flashbacks to all the times where she wasn't there was mm-hmm. completely unnecessary. We were talking fair about enough. that. Fair enough, fair enough. And I think that it would have been so much smarter to have that one scene of like, oh, like you're Arthur, right? And not have it flashback because that's kind of like just hammering, hammering it home. I guarantee that was a studio thing. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, uh, yeah. Because you automatically you know what's happening when she says like, when she's saying like, who are you? Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. So like the fact that they had to flash back and go like, oh, she wasn't there the whole time. <laughs> I, 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 I get what you're saying. I kind of liked it to see him almost like by himself to like see him just kind of talking to nothingness. But imagine how cool it would be if the second time you saw it, you started noticing all the scenes where she just got up and left. Mm-hmm. No, and I know. He's it's just true. alone. Because that's the thing. I watched it the second time. And I'm like, how did I not realize that she was a figment? Because it's like, there's no way she would be that calm knowing he followed her. It's like the Sixth Sense. Yeah. If you rewatch the Sixth Sense, or like with Bruce Club. Willis and everything, and then like I see dead people. Well, yeah, but if you rewatch that movie, Bruce Willis doesn't talk to anybody. Like, whenever he talks to someone, they don't respond to him. It's like Fight Club too. Like yeah, where no one, no one ever acknowledges Tyler Durden. Mm-hmm. It's it's stuff like that. Or right? it's like that when they do, it's like Tyler and um, the narrator. Cause I or guess both in the same. They'll both be in the same thing, but they never like talk. Like it's always one person doing the talking. It's never like they're both interacting with people at the same time. It's always one or the other because they're both the same person. It's, crazy, man. <sighs> it's I don't know. I really wish they hadn't done that. I, okay, so I I kind of want to. Oh, actually, were you were you done with? No, I was done with my thing. Okay, because now I, I'm interested. Because. <laughs> You, you know, you were saying it's like you, you left the theater feeling very sick and stuff. And I'm just, like, interested, like, were, were, were there any specific parts that kind of brought this out? It's just, like, it's such a Or is it dismal, just the idea? It's such a gross-feeling movie. Like, even, like, the way it's shot, they shoot Gotham looking like a disgusting... Like, they specify that there's, like, a garbage strike. Mm-hmm. It's a that, very, like, hopeless movie. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. It, like, it's such a, like, a vacuum. Let's say that. Because like, you go into it. I, I was I went into that movie, like, we were all, like, memeing it out and joking. Like, we were being like, oh, we're going to go see the Joker, huh? And then you leave, and we were just kind of, like, sitting there, just kind of like, what? I don't know. I personally felt kind of gross when everyone was, like, cheering him on, treating him like, like a godlike figure. When did the they cheer? Theater? At the end, when they free At him. The end. Oh, oh, like, not... You mean the audience in your theater or the no, people, no, no, in, the people in the movie? And people in the movie. I know. Okay. If people in the, I would have gotten up and left. If bro. people cheer, okay. So yeah, so you, I guess you you did, didn't look at it. Yeah, like you didn't look at him as a hero character. Why yeah. were people cheering him on though? Like as like a Wall Street killer? Or, like, okay, well, were there ul- ulterior motives? Or? So the ending involves him. Um, they're kind of leading up the entire movie that he's gonna that he's a big fan of this talk show. Mm-hmm. Hosted by Murray Franklin, who's played by Robert De Niro. Wow, big and talk show 
it's cool. like it's go it's like leading up to it the entire time that he's like it's his idol and shit and it's his dream to be like seen by him right because he wants to be a comic which is also like a killing joke thing because he was a comedian in, yeah. the, in the book he he wanted to be a stand-up comic and he wanted to be recognized by his hero and he has like fantasies about meeting him and him saying wow i love your work to him right mm -hmm. he does a bad stand-up sket like thing and it gets on the show like as like they like make fun of him oh, on the show oh damn and then they then they invite him on the yeah. show cuz they're no. like hey like the audience reacted so like positively to your thing and that so his plan is to go on the show and kill himself his exact plan is to go this is not a delusion like this is no, no. well i mean you could debate it you can debate if it's I like a delusion to think it really happened um there's also okay there's also i was having a discussion with my friend my my buddy and I at school we have a diff we have we had an interesting take on this just because we I looked at it more as a like a Batman movie than mm. anything else I looked at it as like an origin story for a character yeah and not like a psychological analysis I think that was my well my I think my favorite part of that was it didn't feel like a typical yeah like it felt like a standalone like it, it's it felt like, like a standalone, standalone movie thing. yeah that's and what I appreciated I also yeah, appreciated I that and I like that oh, they there is like comic book references in it but they're a lot more like subtle yeah like there's um. That like poster that y'all know y'all notice when Bruce Wayne goes down the goes down. Yeah. The I saw that he goes so fucking stupid kind goes of down the homage. Goes so, the homage. There's so a this there's this so Bruce Wayne's like a kid in this yeah. movie, and there's a scene where he's in like a treehouse, mm. and then he goes down like a fucking like like a fire, a fire, a fire oh it's kind of like pole. Batman it's like, like oh, it's Batman, Batman. It's, only like fucking, it's only a four foot tall pole like you did not need to go down it yeah but then but then when you see him go down in your head you're like na 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 Batman his parents are dead yeah hey spoiler though like, okay, oh, we have to mention that quickly they show the Waynes dying which I think is a brave move because we've never seen the Wayne family yeah that's die. so true and it's really inventive there's a shot in this movie that I, I took my breath away of Martha Wayne's pearls <laughs> <laughs> falling to the ground we've never seen that we've only seen it like 47 <laughs> times the every single pros. Batman origin story I remember before BVS came out some like podcast was Yo, like if the I BVS have... Wayne's death looked so much nicer though so well dude it was and, like, so much the, better the hammer it was, it was going back shot. and knocking the pearls yeah. out and then you're like dude that's Negan oh wait <laughs> no, but, like, dude it's Maggie oh wait <laughs> Oh, he has a bowl oh, cut. Oh, wait, wait, Maggie and Negan played Bruce Wayne's dad and mama? Yeah, yeah. in oh. Batman v Those were like, that was like their they died at the, Yeah, they and died, they died, died right away. Yeah. But like, it's... That scene, I, I mean like, I get why it was in slow motion. I don't think it needed to be in slow motion. But I like, think it was dramatic. I was fine with it because they put it in like during the credits. Yeah, yeah, during the opening credits. I thought that was I liked it was a, it was a lot more stylized and well shot. Than I, than I, I accepted it. Yeah, no. I don't accept this. <laughs> Because at this point, it's just kind of like, oh my god, we've seen it like 400 times. Yeah. Like Gotham did it. The I thought it would have been so it. smart if... Yeah, we were saying You that. showed the Waynes exit the theater. And then the guy just follows. And turn the corner. And you see a guy follow them. And with then, like, or even like just pull the gun out. And there's just a shot of him walking with the gun. Yeah. You would have... Not a single person in that theater would have been... What happens? <laughs> <laughs> not a single person in that theater would have been confused. They could have even kept the shot near the end where he's like thinking of the... When he's like laughing at the very end when he's in That's Arkham. one of my favorite... They could have just showed the shot of it panning out and Bruce standing next to his dead Yeah, parents. exactly. Like, exactly. Okay. I, I think that was like the one... Because there are people in that movie that are like, oh, the ending where he rises up. And everyone cheers. I got chilled, and I'm like, "Well, you should be on a list." <laughs> that moment where, you, where they're like, "What's so funny?" And then there's just a quick shot of him, and then he smiles and goes, "You wouldn't get it." That gave me fucking chills because I'm like, "That's fucking Batman." Yeah. <laughs> like, he's gonna was, kick your ass one yeah, day. Yeah, he's gonna punch your teeth in. <laughs> we should talk about. Did you wait? Wait, you have to continue the Murray Franklin you, thing. Okay, Ralph. Oh so he gosh, goes yeah. on. Okay, yeah, that's right. Jeez, we I went on the side. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. Joker's teeth getting punched down a second. Because it relates to Suicide Squad. Oh no. Deleted Suicide Squad scene stuff came out. With, with Jared Leto? Yeah, what? that explains why he has the tattoos and the grills. What? So Batman David, punched his teeth in? So basically... Yeah, it, no, I think that's it, what it and was. And it explains why Wayne Manor burned down. So what it explains is after he killed Jason Todd, he went and burned down Wayne Manor, Br Batman confronts Joker and he beats his face in and they shot it. Yeah. And We've been Affleck. Yeah. And that's why he has the tattoos of like the Robin and stuff. And then he has the grill. That's why. Because they filmed this scene. There's pictures of it. 
of him of Ben Affleck beating Jared Leto's face in, and then the studio was like, no one would get it, and they made them cut it. Aww. That would have been so cool. And then they were I saying, mean, the like, still dude, shit, I, I know, but, but like, it would have been so dude, cool. But then they also said, they, they, David Ayer did like an AMA on Reddit, and he was like, yeah, I literally shot that scene to explain why he was the way he was in BVS. Because it's explained that, like, he was fine until Jason Todd died, and then he, like, lost his shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Which that would have explained. Like, killed, killed, started killing a bunch of people. That's, it would have explained everything, and no one would have given a shit after that. <laughs> Dude, they, they shouldn't have cut it. There's pictures of it. And I've Damn. seen the pictures of it. Damn. Anyway, he Murray goes Franklin. on he goes on Murray Franklin. They invite Planning him on. Planning to kill himself. On Planning the, to kill on himself. Live on air. So leading up to the Murray Franklin thing, that's when he finally puts on like the purple or like the violet suit. And he's red. Yeah. He dyes he, he red, dyes his whatever. hair green. He dyes his hair green. He's the classic on the Joker clown. look. And at this point, because of... So it's only known that the guy who killed the Wall Street people, which is what sets off the entire thing... It's known that he was dressed up either in a clown mask or he was wearing clown makeup. Mm. So people are starting to take like uh, clowns as like as, as like, like a, a political as like a freedom symbol. thing. Yeah, Almost yeah. like what's like happening in like oh. Hong Kong and stuff where they're dressing up as like characters like and a, like like a fuck the rich. Okay. Yeah. It's a very anti rich movement that how So like, it's, it's like literally there's people all over the city and even like extras in the background during other scenes that are wearing like clown masks yeah, yeah. and stuff. Mm. So he goes on and he expects to go out. Well, that's also the scene in the trailer where he's like, can you bring me, can you announce me as Joker? He's like, sure, kid. Well, that, that was one thing I didn't really like, that he, or kind of, they explain he gets the name because when he shows the... Calls him a Joker. The, the video, he's like, oh, get a load of this Joker. And, that, and then he says, can you call me Joker? That's what you called me when you showed my video, Murray. Oh, damn. That's how he gets the name. That's how he gets the name. Does he speak Still better than Han Solo. That's how... That's how yeah, he yeah. sounds exact. How, how well, many Joaquin people Phoenix doesn't you? do a voice. He just... Like, he no, uses his actual voice. Who are your voice. people? No, I have no people. Han Solo. <laughs> and then a legend was born. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Thanks, see, Disney. <laughs> anyway. Um, so he goes out. He does, like, the bring out the clown yeah, shit. Yeah. Where he's like, uh, and He goes oh, out. I love that. He, like, starts acting fucking weird. Like, he kisses, like, some random woman that's a guest on the show. Yeah. He does an Adrian Brody. Yeah. Yeah, he sits he down. Like, mm-hmm. He sits down, and the interview's going as he imagined it, like, going in his, like going into it mm. previously, where he's like, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to answer his question, then I'm going to say, you want to hear a joke? And his plan was to say, knock, knock, and then fucking shoot himself. Okay. That was supposed to be his plan. But, but then, it kind of goes off the rails, because he says... Why are you dressed like this? Is this you said earlier? This isn't like a political thing, and he just says like I know, I know I understand why. And then like Murray, instead of like leading into the tell the joke, he's like he kind of just starts to like ask him like why are you dressed like this? And he starts getting into his mental health and stuff. And I forget exactly how he gets into it, but he's like, I feel free wearing this. Almost as free as I did when I killed those people on the train. When I killed I, those three Wall Street guys. I think I think the moment where he be, he's like, I'm not going to kill myself, is when he's flipping through his journal and he sees the thing he wrote where he's like, all I hope is that my death makes sense. And he realizes, yeah. if I die here, will it make more sense than if I can like go on and do other stuff? And then that's where he's like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't kill myself. Maybe I can do other stuff. Because at that point, he almost realizes he's like a symbol. Yeah. Mm. So then he, he fully admits on, he might like the most watched show in the city, that he was the guy that killed the people. On the train. And, and at that point, it stops being like a comedy show. And they're just kind of like, why would you do that? And they start like questioning him. They fully believe him that he did it? Well, yeah, I mean, it's like some... Because he's like, I've got nothing to lose. Like, yeah. Some I crazy really loony it. dude. And at this point, it's it's still implied he's going to kill himself at some yeah. point. And he's just like, he just starts, he starts answering the questions. And people in the audience are like, get him off the fucking stage and shit. And then, like, everyone's visibly, like, uncomfortable. Mm. Obviously. Yeah. Because he is now, he killed three people. Yeah. He's sitting there, and he's talking. And then Murray's like... Again, dropping like the host, like yeah, Jimmy yeah. Fallon demeanor. He's just kind of like, what would drive you to m- literally take three people's lives? He's, he's trying to play the hero in that scene, and I feel like that's where it starts to anger him. Joker's like, you're two faced. Like, you really you don't care. You're just trying to make yourself look good. He's trying to, like, he starts, like, you see him, like, Walking Phoenix plays, like, he's gradually getting more and more agitated. Yeah. Mm. And he starts getting angrier and angrier, and then, like, Murray's just like, 
you have no like you wasted these people's lives you're a fucking monster like you're a waste dude you're a waste dude and then the most very abrupt scene in the movie he suddenly starts yelling at murray and he's he says like the full quote which is what do you you want to hear another joke murray like, no, no, I don't, I don't want to hear another joke. Don't. What do you get when you cross a mentally deranged loner with, with a society that abandons him and treats him like trash? I'll tell you what you get. Wait. You get what you fucking deserve. And then he, he kills him on air? Yeah, yeah. On, on like live TV. He just pulls out a gun and shoots him, on, and shoots like him in, in the, the face. fucking face. That's what I was saying. Wait, leading into it is what I was going to say when you introduced me. I was going to like, he says like, you're terrible, Murray. And he goes, what? And he goes, you brought me on here to make fun of me. Because that was the whole point. You because played he, my video. He play, he has, like, you played my video and you laughed at me. And like that's when, like I think that was the moment where he like mm. switches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he fucking shoots him. And then he gets up. Everyone starts freaking out and running away, obviously. Yeah. He starts like dancing with the gun. And then he turns and starts shooting at like the body. Yeah. And then it just like cuts to like static. No, he like grabs the camera first. Oh yeah, and then he's and like, then and, and he starts saying something to the camera. I forgot what he says. I think he like, says he says like don't forget to, and then it cuts out. I think he was gonna be like don't forget to smile, and then security yeah. came and tackled him. We don't, you don't know that to the next part where it shows the unedited footage. Yeah, and just security like poof, and like takes him oh, out. Shit. So it cuts to him outside. Yeah. Like, in, in a cop car. car. Yeah. With his head. To Heath Ledger. Yeah, with his head against <laughs> Oh, did you get that cinematic parallel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the parallels are I showed... The, did you see my tweet about the Citizen Kane scene? Where it's him dancing on the stairs, and I posted it with, like, the Citizen Kane, like, dancing scene? No one saw that? Okay. No. Anyway, so he's, like, on... He's in the cop car, and he's driving. And the cop's like, you're a monster, eh? And all around him is riots. Yeah. Because people in clown masks are, like, burning shit. Mm. Because at that point, they have, like, a leader now. Like, they have the They're base. They're like, oh, yeah, he killed. They he know killed. who did it. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. Why did, what was the motive in killing those Wall Street people originally? Oh, so he was on the train and they were, like, harassing him? <coughs> That's it? They were harassing, they they're harassing the some, he has a condition where, where he, like, he laughs. like, laughs uncontrollably at, usually at inappropriate times. Which is a real condition. Yeah. It's yeah. very like, similar he just to starts threats. laughing. So, um, these, uh, these three, these three guys were, like, harassing some woman and then he just starts laughing. And then and the guys are like, what are you laughing at, huh? They start singing Bring Out the Clowns, too. Yeah. And earlier in the movie, he had been given a gun by one of his co-workers. Because the opening scene is the scene from the trailer where he gets the shit kicked out of him by the kids. After his sign gets stolen. And they, like, break the sign over him and he's, like, lying in the alley. That's literally the title card. Did you see the trailer? <laughs> well, okay, I, I did. I just forget what it... Well, that's, like, there's, like, the, that's, like, literally the opening of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then... One of his co-workers is like, I heard what happened. I'm going to give you this gun. Um, then during one of his, like, he, he works as, like, a sideshow clown. Because he wants to make people laugh and shit. Mm -hmm. And he drops the gun when he's at, like, a children's hospital. Because he's, like, performing for, like, the sick kids. And then he gets fired because, yeah, he brought a gun to a children's hospital. Right. So at this Which point... Apparently is illegal or something. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> so at this point in the movie, he's, like, he's, he's jobless. He has nothing... And he's riding on the train, and then they start making fun of the woman, and he starts laughing. And previous points in the movie, he has a card. Whenever he starts laughing, he'll hand someone a card that says, I have a condition, please pay me no mind. And then on the back, it says, please return this card. Yeah. Nobody returns the card. Yeah. They always keep it. So, like... It just has unlimited cards. So, basically, he's sitting there, and they start taunting him. And he starts trying to, like, reach for his card to, like, show them that he has a condition. And they yeah. just knock it out of his hand. They pick him up. Or at least, like, he stands up. And then they start punching him. They he started beating him up. Yeah. And then in probably one of the most, like, that was probably one of the best scenes, too. Because he's on the ground. And they start kicking him and kicking him. And this, all of a sudden, you hear a gunshot go off. And you see the dude's chest, like, just... Or you get shot face. in the head, yeah. You see the dude's face go, like... And then the other guy gets shot twice in the chest. And then another guy get, the other guy gets shot in the leg. But then he runs out of the subway. And then he starts, like, chasing him. And then he yeah. fires, like, at him on the ground. And he dies. He starts, like, pleading for his life. He's like, God, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. He shoots him, like, three times in the yeah. back of the head or something. I don't Damn. know. And then you think, normally, in these types of movies, you see it in these, like, horrified at what he just did. But, like, he just kind of goes... No, he, he he goes to the washroom that's and then starts great. dancing. dancing like, that's one of the best that's, things that is, I've ever that is, seen. That is one of the better the best scenes in the film. Because like, that's like dancing. his like almost like his liberation moment because he's mm -hmm. like 
I think that's when he starts to realize, like, I'm not a clown. Like, this is who I can be. Like, I'm th like he was almost presenting himself for the first time, and he was like, because that's how he kind of stopped at the end. He was doing his dance, and then he ended kind of like this, looking himself in the mirror. Also, he's like, this is who I am. Interestingly, that was when the Zazie Beats hallucinations kind of pick up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they were being like, what? No, <coughs> that was the, the first one happens right after where she's like at his door. No, it, no, that's no, before that's, because no, that's then he kisses he her. After he kisses her right after the killing. Oh, that's right. What am I saying? Okay, I'm sorry. But like, they do pick up after that because yeah. then he's all confident and he's and like, they're like, they're they're together. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So at that point, after that, because the rich people got killed, people slowly in the background and stuff start wearing clown masks, and there are mm -hmm. news reports about people wearing clown masks, and you start seeing protests, like outside, like events for the one percent, yep. like galas and stuff, where people are protesting with like clown masks on. So after he finally admits on national television that he did it and he kills a one percenter, people outside are like cheering as this cop car goes by and shit and they're burning stuff. And he's talking to the cop and the cop says like, you see all this shit you did. Yeah, you did this. This is your fault. And then he kind of smiles and he he's says like, something I like, know. Isn't it like, isn't it beautiful yeah. or something? And then like zero to 100, a fucking ambulance hits the cop car and the cop car flips. It's on its top. And you just see, well, first of all, you see a bunch of people approach the car. You see the cop dead in the front. Mm -hmm. Both of them. B are there two? There were two cops, right. yeah, they both died. So they tear the door open, and he's knocked out in the back, and they pull him out. And it's all the people wearing the clown masks. They lay him out in, like, a Christ-like... Yeah. Like... And then he comes to, and he stands up, and that's the famous part in the movie. At this point, his nose is bleeding, and then as everyone cheers him on and shit... He goes, like... He, like, draws a smile with his fucking blood, and he starts, like, laughing... And then he starts. Yeah. Doesn't he start he dancing? Dance. Yeah. He starts dancing in front of everyone. They it's... all they all start like cheering and shit. And at that point, it cuts to the movie theater, and it says Zorro on the thing. And then you say Zorro. That's the movie they watched in the books when the parents got shot. And then they start walking out, all like, "Oh no! Quickly, Mr. Bullcut Kid, we have to go into the alley." And they run Mr. into the alley. Bullcut Kid. I love how whenever we the last two times we've seen Kid Bruce Wayne, he has like a seventies bowl cut. <laughs> So they bring him out into the alley. Stop laughing. That's, that's, that was a real epidemic in the 70s. <laughs> what, bowl cuts? Yeah. So they bowl cuts. You, you could have a bowl cut right now, Ethan. Yeah. Did you get vaccinated? Just take off my wig and yeah, it's actually it's, a bowl cut. He just goes, doof. <laughs> what the fuck have you been saying about me? So they, and then like, then they, like a guy in the Joker mask, like shoots Bruce Wayne's parents. Wait, they like brought them out like execution style? No, or, like, like they, they, they escape into the alley. Okay. Because they're leaving the movie and they see everyone going like, ah. Yeah, so like what happens with every single yeah, and then, then he falls Wayne them. parents death, and then he he executes their like he he says the same thing before he kills them that the Joker did before he ex uh, killed the TV host because Joker was like this is what this is what you get what you deserve, and then the guy who shot the Waynes was like you get what you deserve, and then he shot them. So he was obviously uh -huh. like directly inspired by the Joker. It's like a running theme or a running plot, like kind of like a side plot throughout the movie that Wayne, like Thomas Wayne, his father, is gonna be like. Is like he's running for mayor, yeah, and he's I gonna like the like basically the ninety nine percent don't think he's gonna do anything for them, even though he says he's going to because he's a rich like upper class dude. Mm. So that's sort of like the the reason there's so much resentment against him, and also he he speaks out against Joker because it's it's said that the Wall Street guys were actually Wayne employees. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So he's like, well, I, they're all family, and I don't like that they were killed. I wish these people would just discuss their issues with me. And that's where a lot of the resentment towards him comes from the public. Well, the whole, I think the whole protests start when he's on live TV after the murders happen, and he's like, he refers to the lower class as clowns, and then that's when everyone's oh, like, let's yeah. put on these masks and let's fuck the rich, right? Because it's like, no one, why would you call them? <laughs> that's yeah, like, we're going to literally, we're gonna literally, literally the rich. fuck Maybe the rich. Them, but... Consensually, <laughs> that's important. <laughs> I don't know, dude. That was just. Well, we're at the we're at the yeah, one hour mark. Holy really? shit! We spent a whole hour. Man, that was yeah. a good hour though. I well, feel like I could still go for another hour <laughs> talking about that. Movie, this movie man. is a very discussiony movie. It's a very discussiony movie. I don't. Again, I don't know how I feel about it. It is a very depressing movie. Rated at three and a half out of five. That's it, a seven out of five. Is that what you? I mean, seven it? out of ten. Is that what you gave it? That's what I gave it. Seven out of ten. Yeah, I give it about that. I, I give think it a solid nine out of ten. I love that. Movie. I think it's well written, but. Wait, what? 
Nine out of ten. I know. That's I, what Danielle everyone came in this room now is like, oh, okay. Uh, Ethan is an eye. incel. I'm actually. I have a clown mask in my back pocket. <laughs> like, the issue with me though is that I like. I've seen the movie, so I can't fully judge you. It's cool. such Wait a like. You see it, then. <laughs> then you can judge me. Then I'll get back. To yeah, you. then we can judge you. It's, then Yellow will be like, why did you like this movie? It's, I don't think I'm gonna watch it. Sorry, we keep going. No, based on our gonna watch it anymore. Based, <laughs> I'm gonna get tripped out. Bro. <laughs> what were you yeah, gonna say though? Like, I'm scared. It's it, what? It's. I said this on like my my private. It's not a feel good movie. It's not. You don't go into that movie and you leave going, wow. I feel I feel happy. Wow, I really love Sunshine and Roses. No, you leave uh, it. No, just, no. Just yeah. being like, wow, humanity is terrible. <laughs> I'm sad. And Joaquin Phoenix may or may not win an Oscar. I don't know. I hope he does. He at least, he should at least get a nomination. If he doesn't get nominated, I think the Oscars are dumb. I don't know. I think the dude that played Bruce Wayne what? should get nominated. Yeah, man. He had to get those subway CDs <laughs> in his mouth. That's the most terrifying part of the movie. Did you hear us talk about that earlier? When the part where he says, I'm Bruce. And then he goes, why don't you smile? And he puts his finger in his mouth and he pulls. I was like, he took the subway to get there. That's a gross subway hands going in his mouth. His subway fingies. Subway fingies. <laughs> and he's just... It's shots in the trailer, too. Yeah, I know. He just, so we, stu- we, just stuck we, his fingers we had, in we this had, kid's mouth. So, like, dude, we had time to, like, prepare ourselves for that, and still it's unsanitary and disgusting. All right. Well. We should wrap it up. Yep. Yeah. In it. Um, yeah. See the movie. See the movie and make your own judgment. I'd like to discuss your the movie own. with other pe- with, uh, people who see it. I, I, I like this movie. Would you... But you've discussed it with people who, who like it. Would you like to discuss it with people who don't like it? Yeah, sure. I mean, we've I mean, been I, discussing I, I'd it. Like to, you. Well, that's the thing. I'd like to discuss the content. Like, as in the terms of quality, I mean, I don't know if I can really say a lot on that because I'm not a very, like, when it comes to technicalities of film, I'm not obviously very experienced. I think it was shot. Like, I think it's technically really good. Yeah. Um, on like, a technical level, yes, very. It, actually, well, if they think it's a negative movie because of the content, I'd love to talk to them about that and be like, okay, what's going on, bruh, <laughs> you know? To see, like, you know, because obviously it's there's a lot of heavy stuff in there, um, and I completely understand if it's like, I, d- I don't like it because the subject matter is so dark and heavy. It's like, yeah, cool. I just I per- I personally like when movies go to a very dark and heavy place, because it's like it really it, it it puts you in a vulnerable spot too, and it makes you have, have to think, you yeah. know. Yeah. That's like, and I hate yeah, thinking. Thank you. <laughs> Me too. But, like, uh, like, that's exactly it. That was like what I was trying to do when making Pandora. <laughs> oh, I thought Is that was a fake. Catholic? I thought you were actually laughing. Like, wait, was that a real laugh or was that a fake laugh? It was my joke. Okay, okay, I was, was going to say, I'm like, <laughs> quickly before we end, what are your thoughts on his? What are your thoughts on his laugh? I, like I think it's laugh. cool. I like his laugh. I think it sounded a lot like Mark Hamill's laugh, which I, I liked. I, la- I, 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 I that's that was that's what it was. Here, we'll, we'll he play like the trailer for you. He was like no, a. Cr- I, I, I I thought he, he laughed like a bird almost. <laughs> it's a, no, actually, you know what was like really elevated his acting. Yeah. Was when he was laughing and like very clearly trying to hold it back. And he was like oh, having trouble yeah, breathing. Yeah. yeah. He really studied the disorder well because I saw a video of a guy who had it and he was like spot on because it's like when you, when you have it you laugh to the point where like. It, all the muscles contract, you can't yeah, breathe. and it, like, hurts. And so the guy's like, ha ha, and then he's like, because he can't breathe. Yeah. And Joaquin Phoenix does that, so he definitely, he really did it well. Well, who were we? I was Ralph. I was the Joker. <laughs> no, I was just like, Goodbye, Murray. No, I'm, I'm Ethan. That was a really bad joke. <laughs> that was a great joke. Um, I'm Murray Franklin. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Um, I don't get what I don't. Don't you dare I was point. I said you get what you deserve. <laughs> um, no, you get what you fucking deserve. Oh. That's the. Last oh, that's the, no, that's the other thing. In the, the false advertising, I went into that movie thinking I was going to hear the words. I thought my life was a tragedy, but now I know it's a comedy. And they lied to me. The line in the movie was, "I used to think my life was a tragedy, but now I know it's a fucking comedy." Yeah, I can't believe that. That's and not my what Christian they said. School was there too. I was Bible like studies group. It was embarrassing. Said three Hail Marys after that one. Anyone want uh, this? <laughs> the stick? This stick, cheesy, cheesy stick? stick. What? <laughs> that was a banana. Yeah, this is my banana. It's a very chunky banana. This, yeah. this pale, yeah, cheesy that stick. Really Anyone want it? It's, it's <laughs> I'm good. You go, you go muck yourself. <laughs> oh, that's good. We can use that from now on. Go muck yourself. Not from now on. Okay, who are oh, you, Ryan? All in I was Ryan. I was Chris. See you next week. We may be wearing the same clothes. But yeah, next week. <laughs> <laughs>
Bye. Bye. See vote. You, uh, vote. Oh yeah, vote. Vote. Yeah, vote. Vote and also Tone Book Ramen, please sponsor our podcast. Please give me Andrew the, Shear, the discount, please. That's a bad Andrew I'm Shear. Kidding. I'm kidding. Anyone please come them. here. Inform yourself before you vote. Yeah, inform yourself before you vote. Nice.